Hello, it's Ruby and welcome back to another university vlog. Today is Thursday and it's 7.30 in the morning. I'm just popping to the shops to get some more dairy-free milk because we're out. I also want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Karma, an app and Chrome extension that helps you to save money online. So I just got some almond milk. This one is usually really expensive, but it was on sale, so I got this. And also three carrots, because I love raw carrots at the moment. Porridge always looks nice, Weetabix look a bit. So yours looks nice, because it looks like porridge. I was just reading one of the sketches by Boz here on my iPad and annotating it with the Apple Pencil. I read sketches by Boz a couple months ago in preparation for this module, but this is the sketch we're going to be looking at in seminars in particular. So I have actually got parcels to open and I'm going to open them with you. I'm so excited about this. I have ordered a load of books. Some of these are books that I have ordered for university. Some are ones I've ordered for pleasure. One thing which I, I actually found really hard as an English literature student is making the time for reading for pleasure during term time because there is so much reading that you've got to do for your course and there are so many books that you can read which will help you with your course that it's really easy to just read those books. But I know that when I was doing philosophy and theology, for example, in first year, like I did make time for reading for pleasure because I love reading for pleasure. Like, so I'd read my course books and then I'd read for pleasure as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do love reading my course books. Um, there's a reason I study English literature. I do love reading like the books I've been set. But I also want to make sure this year that I don't stop reading the range of literature that I like reading. These are books that hopefully I will get around to reading this term or this year. So I ordered these books online and used Karma discounts to save money on them. So today's video is very kindly sponsored by Karma. Karma is basically a way to save money when shopping online and like two years ago when I first heard about it, I downloaded it on all of my family members computers and I've used it literally every time I've shopped online since then. So I'm really excited to be working with them. I just want to note that the books that I bought today, I managed to get 5% off my order with Hive using a Karma discount. I also have a list of books I'm intending to buy saved on Karma and I got a notification that a load of these books were on sale from Blackwells, so I also bought some books from them. Karma really can tangibly save you money and it's also so easy to use. It's genuinely so easy to download and start using Karma. You just click to download the Chrome extension on their website and it's all set up. Uh, so it's compatible with all major shops and will then just pop up when it sees your shopping. One thing you can do is click to save an item for later and then Karma will give you an email or mobile notification when the item is on sale. You can also organize your shopping into lists. So for example, I have a list for books I want to purchase. And yes, I probably do have a problem because yes, I already do have a lot of books, but I also just love reading. My favorite bit though is that the Chrome extension of Karma will scour the internet for discount codes and apply these whenever you place an order. And I always, always do this when I'm placing an order. Through doing this, you can see that I got 5% off my Hive order. Also worth mentioning is that Karma gives cash back to you and to a good cause when you shop from particular shops. If you want to download and start using Karma 2, then you can just click on the link in the description box. It's completely free to download this Chrome extension. I'm gonna start with this parcel, which is the biggest one. This one is from Hive, which is basically a collection of, I think it's like 300 independent bookshops. So you can support independent bookshops when shopping online. Oh 
I'm so excited about this. So the first book I've got here is Emily Dickinson's Letters and this is an Everyman's Library Pocket Poets edition. I love these collections so much. I have the Four Seasons one, which I've raved about so much. They're just always very well curated anthologies. I am potentially going to be looking at Emily Dickinson's letters for my dissertation. I'm still not entirely sure, but this is an anthology of some of the best ones and I thought it would be quite a handy companion. There's a lot to be said for criticising anthologies and what certain publishers and editions choose to include in those anthologies. The first collection of Emily Dickinson's letters, which is the one that I read front to back, like dubbed her full collected works, was actually deemed really uh, biased and kind of has received a lot of criticism because it didn't give an accurate representation of her letters and so in particular I'm really excited to see how they've ordered the letters, whether they've done it thematically, uh, depending on like kind of who she's writing to chronologically. It looks like they've grouped it by who she wrote to. Emily Dickinson's letters are a joy to read and they give you a great insight into her personal voice and like how she maybe would have spoken in conversation. I think letters are fantastic because you do hear people's actual voices through them. It's like the main way that I think we're able to actually hear uh, from people in history and um, yeah, I love reading people's letters, so I'm very excited about this one. The next book I have got here is How to Read Paintings, um, a crash course in meaning and method. I really want to be able to look at a painting and identify like the era, um, like be able to analyse them, because I love going to galleries, but I really feel like I don't know enough about paintings and art to appreciate them that much and I know yes I do appreciate them just by virtue of like looking at them like the aesthetic value but I really want to be able to understand them better so I'm really hoping that this book will help me and I think it will be useful for English as well because you can learn about the historical period by looking at a painting and so it can be quite good for like cross-referencing with books and what you're learning from books um, especially I'm doing a life and death module this term which is very like context focused and so hopefully being able to analyse early modern paintings will help me with that um, but I'm so excited for this and it's also so beautiful like look at all those paintings uh, the next thing, this book of essays by Virginia Woolf, Gen Genius and Ink, Virginia Woolf on how to read. It says, in this artfully created volume of originally anonymously published pieces, here is Woolf unbound, taking on the classics of literature with her fearsome wit and intelligence. The weirdness of Elizabethan plays, the pleasure of revisiting favourite novels, the supreme examples of Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, Thomas Hardy and Joseph Conrad, all are here in essays that offer a glimpse into the thinking behind Woolf's work. Yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I love Virginia Woolf's essays. I haven't actually read any of her books apart from The Waves, but I've read a load of her essays and I might even go as far as to say that she's my favourite essayist. So the next book here is Oscar Wilde and Wild Anna, uh, a compendium of previously ungathered anecdotes, epigrams, asides and accounts. And I saw this in Hatches the other week and I was so intrigued by it. So I'm so excited that I've got it. Of course, Oscar Wilde was renowned in society. Everyone knew about Oscar Wilde. He was this unique character. This is filled with extracts and kind of like people writing on Wilde and I think this will just give a really cool insight into how Oscar Wilde appeared in London society and how other people viewed him and then maybe help to understand him as a person a bit more. Also isn't this just beautiful? And then the final book I have in this high castle is Sassy by Madeline Miller. I read Song of Achilles last month and I just adored it. Um, I loved her writing style so much. It's like reading poetry. I don't want to say visceral, it's like it's like corporeal though, like there's such an emphasis on that, like it's tactile, that's the word. And I kind of love that it's not plot focused, like I really love books that aren't plot focused when the writing focuses on individual moments. The Song of Achilles was a retelling of the myth of Achilles and this is a retelling of Circe. I don't know that much about the Greek myths, so with Song of Achilles I learned about them as I was reading, so I'm sure I'll be able to do the same here. I also really wanted to get the hardback of this because the hardback is just gorgeous, like, oh my gosh. Whoa. I did not know that that's what it looked like under the dust. Okay, now let's move on to the next parcel. So I couldn't find all of the books on Hive. Some of them were out of stock and so, this is from Blackwells. Oh my gosh, this book is so beautiful. So my friend Isabella Athena, you might watch her on YouTube, she has a wonderful channel. She recommended this book to me last time we were video calling, The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Auxie. 
this edition is beautiful. It's the Everyman's Library Children's Classics. Okay, and this is another book which is for university. So it's a Shakespeare Motley, an illustrated assortment. I saw this book in Waterstones back in the summer and I very nearly got it, but I ended up getting a book of essays instead. Um, this is such a beautiful colour illustrated volume and I do know quite a lot of contextual information about the Jacobean period just by virtue of studying it. I know that I still have a lot to learn and um, I'm, I'm doing one module on life and death in the early modern period this term and I'm potentially thinking about doing my dissertation thesis on something related to the Jacobean period too. I feel like this is going to be so great for like getting a better idea of the early modern period in Jacobean England. The really cool thing about this is it's like separated, it's like a dictionary, it goes through the alphabet and so you've got like O for Ovid, for every letter, it basically just teaches you about something fun and contextual and unique and I genuinely cannot wait to read this because I find the Jacobean era so fascinating. Like it's the early modern period, it's the beginnings of the modern period and it influenced the present day so much so it's so cool to learn about it. And then the final book is from Waterstones and this is a book I wanted to get for months. I'm so excited that I ordered it and I I think this is the first one I'm going to read. So this is a Waterstones original, like it's only stocked on Waterstones, but it's by the British Library. It's Decadence, a literary anthology. It's full of writings from the aesthetes, the decadent writers like Oscar Wilde and his contemporaries and I love, love, love this era of writing. It's one of my favourites, like the kind of fin de siècle. I can never say it, the fin de siècle. Separated into sections as well, so this one's on death, spirituality, and it's illustrated too. Oh, I just, I can't wait to read this. Like, I love anthologies like this where you can just dip into them um, and you don't have to kind of like commit to reading something longer. You just kind of fancy something of this genre and so you can just like dip in. So I'm so excited for this. And yes, using Karma again with the Waterstones, I was able to get a discount, which was fantastic. Anyway, at the moment it's five minutes to 12 and my parents are actually coming to collect me at 12 because it's my cousin's wedding this weekend. And so I'm actually going back from university. I've only been here for four days, but I wanted to move in and like start to get settled before term starts because otherwise I'd go to the wedding, move in, and then term would start the next day. So I'm heading back today. Um, my university vlogs will like halt and then like the next time you see me, I'll be back at university for my first day of lectures. Um, I'm really excited for the wedding, but I don't really want to vlog it because I just want to like focus on being present with my family, etc. So actually I need to pack for the wedding, I'm just gonna bring a rucksack, like make sure that I have my laptop and stuff so I can do some studying in the car. I can't remember ever buying this many books at once, like not for a long, long time. Before lunch, Blakeney and I had a study session. We just went through the Dickens seminar questions that we've been set for that week and had like an hour long discussion. And then I did a little bit of washing up before heading into town. I'm just quickly walking into town because I ordered a birthday present to my mum to collect from John Lewis here. I'm also currently listening to a podcast, it's one of Matt Dea Villa's ones. back I did some more preparation for my life and death module we have this live Q&A session every Monday which is really really cool like I think it's a great thing for lecturers to offer so we just have to send out questions based on the reading and the lecture material the weekend before and so I just went through my notes and came up with three questions and emailed those over and this did actually take quite a while because I had quite a lot of questions My parents actually ended up running a little bit behind. They were camping and they stayed at their campsite a bit longer. So it's now three o'clock and they are just a few minutes away, apparently. Apparently. So they're gonna be here any second. This is what I am bringing. I need to bring my bowls downstairs quickly, wash those up before I go because otherwise they'll go all gross. And I'm bringing my Kindle to read. I have got books at home, so I don't need to bring anything else, but 
feels weird to not be traveling with a physical book, like to only be bringing a Kindle. It just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable not having a physical book with me. My parents collected me in the camper van like they'd taken me down before. They'd basically gone camping for those days that I was next to her because they wanted to go on a little holiday, the two of them anyway, and it actually ended up working out quite well because obviously like the area around Exeter, rural Devon is really, really beautiful. And in the camper van, I edited a video and also did some studying. I read three critical essays that I was set to read for my Charles Dickens module and just like annotated those, wrote up notes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you again to Karma for sponsoring today's video. Um, as I said, there will be a link in the description box where you can download this free Chrome extension. Honestly, it is definitely worth downloading. I've been using it for years and would highly recommend it. Anyway, yes, I hope that you have a productive week.